for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. This is Ed Murphy, Johnny. Keystone Mutual. Oh, hi, Ed. I'm not so good, Johnny. Could you come over to the office right away? Well, sure, Ed, but what's... I the... don't want to go into it on the phone, Johnny. It's, uh... Well, it's going to be quite a shock to you. It's about Ben Bryson. Ben Bryson? Yeah, a good friend of yours, isn't he? Yeah, he was. Too bad he had to die that way. You're wrong, Johnny. Too bad he didn't die a year sooner. Come on over to the office. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Keystone Mutual Assurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Ben Bryson matter. Expense account item one, $2.40. Taxi fare from my apartment to the Keystone Building and the office of Ed Murphy, Vice President. I thought as much of Ben as I would my own son. And watched him work his way up to the top job in this company, chief adjuster for the West Coast, head of our San Francisco claims office. Not bad for a young man. I was proud of Ben. Yeah, I know, Ed. And then that accident last month. Foggy night, he missed a curve. Drove his car off a cliff into the Pacific Ocean. And that was that. The end. Only it wasn't the end, or you wouldn't call me over here. No, it wasn't, Johnny. But then two weeks after Ben's death, we started getting complaints from some of our clients out there. Demands for adjustment on claims Ben had reported paid weeks before. Requests for settlement, so on. We couldn't figure it, but we went to work quietly, and we found out. Oh? You found out what? Ben's accounts had been ducted for a long time, Johnny. They were short, way short. In the months before he was killed, he'd embezzled nearly $80,000 from the company. Not Ben Bryson, Ed. Anybody else, yes. But money never meant anything to Ben. Johnny, here. Here's a ticket to San Francisco. Plane leaves in two hours. Now, wait a second, Ed. I think I'd like to pass this one. Yeah, so would I, but we can't, you know that. I left a lot of questions, Johnny. They've got to be answered. And $80,000 of the company's money is missing. Has to be accounted for. Yeah, I know, but... Maybe you ought to get somebody else, Ed. I'd be awful grateful if you'd do it, Johnny. You'd have the best chance. You knew him. He was your friend. Yeah. He was my friend. I know how you feel. Johnny. All right, Ed. Somebody's got to do it. And like you said, Ben was my friend. Let's have the ticket. <laughs> Expense account item two. $8.90. Tips, incidentals, and taxi from the San Francisco airport to the Fairmont Hotel, where I read taxi to Ben's last address, the Franciscan Arms apartment. Ben had always been the two-room bachelor walk-up type, but the Franciscan Arms was equal parts of glitter, glass, swank, and price, with a uniform doorman, bar off the lobby, and a manager with a gardenia in his lapel, a real gardenia. I'm most desirous of assisting you in every way possible, Mr. Dollar, but I'm terribly afraid there's simply very little I can tell you about the late Mr. Bryson. Discretion, you mean? Policy of the house? Mm, well, of course we do try to protect privacy of our residents. Even to the extent of turning down $20? Uh, well, under the circumstances. Thank you. Gratuities of this nature are always welcome. Pardon me. Yes? Oh, yes, Madame Rendrick. Yes, I'll send one of the boys up a little cocoa. Yes, right away, Madame Render. Nasty little poodle. She had to walk it herself, take some weight off her. Now, about Mr. Bryson. He'd been our guest for about six months at the time of his tragic accident. A true gentleman, bon vivant, and, uh, well, on the crassly materialistic side, a free spender. I'm sorry, 20 is all I'll go for. Mr. Dollar. What about visitors, friends here in the building? None that I can recall. Oh, except Mrs. Kern, of course. Mrs. Kern? One of the loveliest and most charming guests we've ever had the pleasure. Pardon? Yes? Yes, Madame Rendrick. The boy is on his way. Oh, yes. Well, please tell Coco I'm so sorry. Coco, what a ridiculous name for a dog. Yeah, and how about Mrs. Kern? Well, she and Mr. Bryson were inseparable. And uh, Mr. Kern? Deceased. Early this year, I believe. 
wonder if I could talk to Mrs. Kern. I'm afraid not, Mr. Dollar. She's been gone for ten days. Gone? Where? I'm the tennis player. She'll be back eventually, though, of course. She still has her apartment here. Oh, that poor dear. Such a tragic coincidence. What do you mean, tragic coincidence? Well, as I understand it, Mrs. Kern's husband also died in some sort of uh, accident. <laughs> I've been tending bar here for two years, Mr. Dollar. I was here before Mr. Bryson moved in, and I'm still here now that he's gone. I guess I knew as much about him as a bartender usually knows. You were his friend, though. How come you're asking me the questions? Well, I hadn't seen him for quite a while. He got out of touch. You know how it goes. Yeah, friends drift apart. It's a mixed-up world. Getting more mixed up all the time. Oh, uh, yes, sir, the usual. What's the double martini? Always wants a double martini. Yeah, Mr. Bryson spent a lot of time in here. Always with Alvy, of course. Alvy? Mrs. Kern, young widow that lives here in the building. Everybody calls her Alvy. You know, makes friends easy. And one of her friends was Ben. The main one. With her every night. I guess he was nuts about her. He was nuts about something. Well, yeah, can't see as I blame him. You ought to see her. Personally, though, I'd hate to be married to a doll like that. He'd go right through a man, leave him high and dry. A doll like that's born to be a widow. Was Ben in here the night he was killed? Yeah, left about nine. Two hours later, he was dead. He left alone, I suppose. No, Elvie was with him. Expense account item three. Twenty dollar tip to the apartment house manager. And a dollar and a quarter. Taxi to my hotel. I couldn't figure the next step. Alvy Kern was the key, and without her, I was stopped cold. None of Ben's old friends had seen him since he started going around with her. His office girl knew how to type and not much else. It was a cold trail. $80,000 had disappeared, and Ben had driven off a cliff and died. There weren't many answers left behind. Then, two days later, I got a phone call. Johnny Dollar. So this is Maurice, Mr. Dollar. Uh, it's the Francis Canal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I have some very interesting information. Well... Oh, all right, $20. What's the information? Well, I've just received a letter from Mrs. Kern. She wants me to forward her mail in care of American Express, Panama City, Panama. Panama City. Okay, Maurice, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Expense account item four, $92.47. Hotel, telegrams, and incidentals in San Francisco. Expense account item five, $267.20. Airfare and incidentals to Panama City, Panama. Un momentito, señor. You are Senor Dollar, no? Oh, yes. El Capitan de Vano of the Panama Federal Police, as his orders. We have received your radiogram, señor, and I have been instructed to cooperate with you intentionally. Oh, good. What about Mrs. Kern? Had any luck finding her? But of course. She's registered the Hotel Primero. Uh, most unusual. Uh, it is small, located on the waterfront. The one would think to find her in surroundings more cheap. Is she alone? Uh, so I am, of course. So, uh, what are your plans, Senor Dollar? Well, I want to talk to her first. After that, we'll see. I'll check with you later, Captain. I've heard your name before, Mr. Dollar. Ben, Mr. Bryson mentioned you. Was it Ben or Mr. Bryson? It has been. Please, I'd rather not talk about it, Mr. Dollar. Ever since that terrible accident, all I wanted to do is forget. That's why I came down here, to get away and try to forget. You thought quite a lot of them, huh? We were going to be married. Well, too bad it didn't work out. You'd have had a good life. Ben's wealth and your... Well, uh, I had the idea that he'd just work for an insurance company. And live the way he did? Oh, come now, Mrs. Kern. Well, actually, that side of it didn't seem to matter much. My husband left me quite well off. And... How long were you married before he died? Only ten months. Oh, you do have bad luck, don't you? Mr. Dollar, 
I'm not sure I understand this attitude. Relax. Here. Have a cigarette. No, thanks. My vices don't include smoking. Oh? Hmm. Mind if I do? Of course not. Thanks. You have a suite here, Mrs. Kern? Or just this room? Just this room? Why? Well, then I imagine this door leads to the bath. What are you doing? Uh-huh, it does. But it's empty. Of course it's empty. Then the only other possibility is that closet. Stay away from there. There was cigarette smoke in the air when I came in. Stubs in the ashtray. If you don't smoke, where did they come from? There's no one here. Stay back or I'll... Look, Mrs. Kern, turning out the lights may be romantic, but it's not the best... Oh! I shook my head, trying to clear it, finally staggered to my feet and found the light switch. Albie Kern was cowering against the wall, staring at me, scared but not saying anything. I stumbled toward the door. The corridor was empty. You're wrong, Johnny. There, there wasn't anybody here. I'm the one who hit you. To hit like that, you'd have to grow a fist three times your size. No. I know what the game is now. I should have caught on sooner, but I didn't. There's no game. I don't know what you mean. Look, only one person I know tears cigarettes apart and shreds the paper that way. No, Johnny, you're wrong. The two of you, in it together all along. They didn't find a body because there wasn't anybody. He's still alive, hiding out. I know who hit me. It was Ben Bryson. we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account item five, 40 cents U.S. currency for a handful of aspirin tablets. Ben, or whoever it was who slugged me, had got away from the hotel without being caught. I gave Ben's description to Captain Devano, and I went to bed. At breakfast in the morning, I still hadn't heard from Devano, but I did get a repeat performance from my other little playmate. Good morning, Johnny. Hmm? Oh, good morning, Mrs. Kern. Mind if I sit down? Not if you don't double up your fist again. I can explain that, Johnny. With all night to think it over? I'll bet you can. I mean, really. I... I wasn't the one who hit you, of course. It was silly to claim such a thing, but it, it wasn't Ben either, Johnny. You don't mind if I call you Johnny. I mean, you were a close friend. All right, friend. Mrs. Kern. If it wasn't you and it wasn't Ben, who was it? Well, the name doesn't really matter. Let's just say it was a friend who'd rather not be brought into the picture. And let's also say that wasn't a bad attempt. But I still don't buy it. It's true, Johnny. Ben was drowned in San Francisco when his car ran off into the ocean. He's dead. He can't be dead in San Francisco and still be tearing up cigarettes in Panama. I did that. I didn't smoke him. But I told him that way. I picked up the habit from Ben. You took a guess and you were wrong. So forget it. Let's be friends. Sorry. I can't afford it. Do you think I sell my friendship? It cost Ben $80,000 of the company's money. Did you get half of it, Mrs. Kern? No. How much did he have left? Stop it. Can't you understand anything? Ben is dead. No, he's not. But I wish he were. What do you mean? Just that. But he, he was your friend. That's right. I thought a lot of him. It hit pretty hard when I learned he'd been stealing from his company. Johnny. So I took the job of digging into the mess and trying to straighten it out. And now I find out he's still alive. No. So now I've got to catch him and take him back. That's going to be even tougher. Oh, you, you wouldn't have to, Johnny. That is, if he were alive. No, I wouldn't have to, but I'm going to. Johnny. With your permission, Senor I'm... Dollar. Oh, morning, Captain. It is possible to speak a word with you, Senor. Sure. Excuse me, Mrs. Kern. Certainly. I uh, did not wish to mention the matter before the Senora. Turned up something? Senor. 
My men have located Senor Bryson. Here, this is the place. Uh, si, senor. This man is leaving one of the little fishing boats which are tied to the embarcadero. The number three one, which is blue painted, you see? Yeah, yeah, I see. Well, it sort of figures. If he wanted to hide out, this would be safer than living in a hotel. You're pretty sure it's him, huh? Quien sabe, senor, but I think so. Miguel Pascaro, who is on the boat, said this man from one month ago and paid plenty of money just to live on the boat tied over the shore. And he's like you described, senor, I think so. All right. I'll go on board and talk to him. I uh, think it'll work better if I go alone. Si, senor, I wait for you here. Good. Well? Ben? Ben? Where are you? Cabin's unlocked. Come on in. Well, it's been a long time, Ben. Come in, Johnny. Have a seat. Thanks. You'll have to overlook this litter. Temporary quarters. Uh, Johnny, why did it have to be you? It had to be somebody, Ben. Sooner or later. You should have known that. I guess. How'd you get on to it? Alvy? Yeah, I traced her. Followed her down here. She fouled up, Johnny. She wasn't supposed to come for six months, and the first thing I know, she's here. Said she couldn't wait. Why did you do it, Ben? You've seen Alvy. Do you need any more answers? She worth the price? For me? Sure. This uh, face of mine always stopped the day in... And Alvy was different? She fell as hard as I did. I didn't know women like her even existed. She's for me all the way. But you still had to buy her. Mm -mm. Price tag, $80,000. No, no, you're wrong. It was only that Alvy'd always lived high, and I had to live that way, too, to be around her. What were your plans, Ben? What were you going to do? Mm, go to Rio, Argentina, maybe, start a new life together. That's why I needed all that money. I didn't spend that much. And Alvy agreed to that idea? Sure, she was all for it. Then why did she keep her apartment in San Francisco? She didn't. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're wrong, Johnny. Somebody gave you a bum steer. She cut loose from everything. She told me she did. Well, we can check on it when we get back there. Easy, Johnny. Easy. I've had this gun on you ever since you came aboard. Now, don't make me use it. Would you use it, Ben? I'm up a dead end, Johnny, and I know it. But I'm still going on as far as I can. Uh, don't try to stop me, Johnny. I don't want to kill you. But if I have to, I will. I let him go. He backed out the cabin door, closed it behind him, and barred it on the outside. I heard his steps cross the deck and run along the wharf. And I waited for Captain Devano to call out, challenge him. But the only sound was a car motor starting up and speeding away. Then I heard somebody come running down the wharf. Senor Torres, are you there? Yeah. Get the door open. Where is he? What happened? He's gone, senor. He takes the car. It is me to blame, senor. I'm not alert before I know... Oh, never mind. Where's the nearest telephone? been over an hour. I should have found them by now. Oh, they will, senor. In Panama, we do not have too many roads, and they're all, uh, how you say, uh, blockaded. Well, they might have slipped through before we got to a phone. Oh, there was no time at the hotel. They say he... Ah, aquí está. Capitán Bevano. Sí, sí, yes. Yo soy cerquito del mar. Sí, sí. No. What is the last? Sí. Cuídelo bien, eh. Vamos ahorita. Adiós. They have been found, Senor Dollar. Yeah, where? They have tried to go by the old road on the cliff. It is too dangerous. They have missed the curve and go into the ocean. 
What? The car is under 10 meters of water. There is no signs of life. Expense account item six, $92. To charter a power launch and hire the services of a diver. The sea was calm, but the water wasn't clear enough to see more than just the outline of the car lying on the bottom. We waited for the diver to come up, and I looked up at the cliff towering over it. There's been another cliff like that in San Francisco. Ah, uh, yes, senor. He's coming up. Oh, good. It was so young. Espérate. El cuerpo de la señora que está abajo. Pero es el único. No hay otro. ¿Estás seguro? Sí, señor. No hay otro abajo. What's the matter, Captain? He has found only the body of Mrs. Kirk. Señor Bryson's body is not in the car. Same pattern. A car plunging off a cliff into the ocean and a body missing from it. Only this time I knew it wasn't fake. Ben couldn't have done a thing like that to Alby. Not to Alby. I looked up at the cliff. Steep but not vertical. A car would have rolled and bounced coming down. I had Captain Devano run the launch in close and I jumped onto the rocks and started to climb. I'd made it halfway to the top before I found him, lying jammed in a crevasse, broken and dying. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah. We didn't make it, Johnny. You didn't have a chance, Ben. I know. It's kind of funny. This, I mean, just like we did it in San Francisco. I mean, this time it's real. Yeah. This time it's real. Yeah. Better not try to talk, then. We'll get some ropes down from the top. Get you out of here. No use, Johnny. Is Alvy... She's dead, then. Uh, you were right about her, Johnny. Forget it. I made her come with me in the car. Tell the gun on her. She got mad. <laughs> Spilled the whole story. Bad enough. She didn't love me. Not any of the time. She admitted it. But I thought she did. And that was fine. Nobody else ever let me even think it. Ben, it's no good talking this so way. it won't matter, Johnny. Like you said, I don't have a chance. Did you know something? I think I'd do the same thing with you. <laughs> Maybe there's no answer for a guy like me. I don't know, Ben. I'm not a judge. Kind of figures, you know, I'll be dying to. I bought her and paid for her, Johnny. I ought to be able to take her with me. After all, I... <laughs> Easy, Ben. <laughs> Johnny, the money, what's left of it, <laughs> inside my coat. Give it to Ed. Tell him I'm sorry. Make him understand. He will. You too, Johnny. I, I'm sorry. You don't know what else? Forget it. I don't think I'd do it again. <laughs> Crazy, eh? A lot of times we all get crazy, Ben. Yeah. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks. For an hour. For an hour. Go on, Ben.
Expense account item 7, $26.30. Hotel, taxi, and miscellaneous while in Panama. Expense account item 8, $312.90. Airfare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $823.82. I'm enclosing a cashier's check for $72,652. Recovered from Ben Bryson. Embezzler. Here's truly Johnny Dollar.